I'm Tony Wessling, and this is The Point. People have a deep human need to believe in a better world, and they associate with brands they think are helping to build such a world. So some of these brands wield tremendous influence over our society, especially media brands. That's why it was extremely disturbing to learn how Sinclair Broadcasting, which owns hundreds of regional television stations, forced on-air personalities in dozens of major markets to read from a script that parroted Donald Trump's fake news point of view. They had to do this or be terminated. From a democratic perspective, this is alarming. Local personalities are trusted for their local perspective. But when that perspective turns out not only to not be their own, but to be clearly in line with a particular political perspective, it falls under the spell of something we at Chromium call the power of six. 666 is, of course, the sign of the devil. And brands that do evil things, things they know could harm vast numbers of people, either physically or psychologically, have fallen under this power of six. It rarely turns out well. All one has to do is look at the fortunes of once respected brands such as Uber and Wells Fargo. See just how far doing bad stuff will get you in the long run. Sinclair is headed down this path, arm in arm with the Red Beast. He's the fellow on the right, the guy with the horns and pitchfork. So he's not hard to spot, but when it comes to making money, he's sometimes hard to ignore. Most every major brand has had to make a choice at some point as to whether they should do a deal, strike a bargain, to play with the power of six in order to gain an advantage over their goody-goody competitors. But most brand leaders, thankfully, end up making the good choice and renounce the power of six for the sake of humanity. Not so Sinclair. What's particularly galling is that this action is completely contrary to what Sinclair boasts on its website in its mission and vision. Its mission statement says, our goal is simple. We alert, protect, and empower our audience on all platforms. Let me fix that for you. It should read, uh, we deceive, destroy, and dehumanize our audience to push our agenda. There, much better, don't you think? Sinclair's vision extols employee loyalty, which it turns out is engendered through a culture of fear and threats against their well-being. It calls local stations an important aspect of the community in which they are located. Perhaps we should change that to uh, asset instead of aspect. An asset as in someone who participates in an espionage operation knowingly or unknowingly. Sinclair also crows about prom promoting, quote, our stations as a whole and our employees as individuals. That's right, individuals. Fierce, independent thinkers who do exactly what Sinclair tells them to do and exactly what Sinclair tells them to say. Some individuals. It's one thing for a media outlet to have a political or social point of view that they push. MSNBC does it. So does Fox. But when local reporters are made into political sycophants through coercion, while local audiences are made to believe that such views are the truth, and anything else is Donald Trump's definition of fake news, well, that's fascism. That's the power of six in all its evil glory. Oh, and perhaps not coincidentally, Sinclair Broadcasting stands to gain access to 72% of U.S. households if the Trump administration approves their acquisition of Tribune Broadcasting. This is the point. I'm Tony Wesley.